I see the sun and I hear the rolling thunder. I pour through all the universe. This place that sings my soul, that sings my soul, my Savior called to thee. Oh, how great thou art. Oh, how great thou art that sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great. My soul, yeah. how great, how great, how great thou art that sings my soul. How great thou art! How great! That is why I sing, oh Jesus. My soul, Jesus, oh, I will never let you go, you've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon a rock. Hey, now I know I love you. I love. I need you, Lord. Though my world may fall, I never let you go. Nothing, we're 
Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father, we give you praise. Amen. Thank you, worship team. That was awesome. We bless God for your life. Thank you for leading us into the presence of God again this morning in our second service, which is the God of Breakthrough meeting. Hallelujah. We also want to say a big thank you to our able media team for great work that they are doing behind the scene. May the God of grace reward each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Welcome to the God of Breakthrough meeting, the meeting which is a meeting of deliverance. I pray for you in the name of Jesus as you are part of the people that are joining life again this afternoon. May you experience deliverance in every area of your life that you need to experience deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say, may you experience deliverance in every aspect of life that you expect to receive deliverance today in the mighty name of Jesus. I also want to say a big thank you to every one of you that is joining me. Not only just joining, some of you have taken it upon yourself. You're taking time off in order to invite people to be part of this broadcast. May the Lord reward you. May the Lord uphold you. May the Lord cause his eyes to shine upon you. May his goodness and his mercy always be your portion all the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. We appreciate you. God bless you. And quickly before we go on, I want you to invite your friends, your family. I want you to quickly text somebody to join us right now to be part of what uh, this, um, to be part of this deliverance meeting. And I know as they join, God is going to richly bless them. So quickly take up your, uh, pick up your phone and begin to text your friend, text your family to be part of this because it's a deliverance service. And I know God is going to deliver his children again this afternoon. Hallelujah. We cannot have enough of God. What did I say? I said we cannot have enough of God. We want more of him every time, every day. And the best way to have more of him is when we stay in his presence, when we come into his presence, when we are just there in his presence, we'll be able to experience more of God. It's my prayer again this morning that we experience more of God. As you are inviting your friends and your family, I want you to please tell them as well to subscribe to our social platform, to like, to share, and always switch on their notification so that we'll be able to reach them <clears throat> anytime that we are home. So please like and share right now as we are online. Like, share, so that other people can join us from every part of the world. God richly bless you. Let's bow 
our heads again for prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us again to be part of God of Breakthrough Meeting. As we join in this service, we ask that you will reveal yourself to us in a way that we have not seen you before. We also pray that you will bring conviction to the heart of your people, that as we hear your word in the name of Jesus, where we need to do any course correction, you will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise, we worship you, and we exalt you. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you will lead us as we go in this service. And all the saints of God that are joining me again this morning, I want you to say a wondrous and a thunderous and a resounding amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning, we are still treating the works of the flesh. What did I say? We are treating the work of the flesh. And um, the topic that we're going to be looking at this morning is idolatry. What did I say? Idolatry. So come with me as we go in this teaching. And I know God is going to give a lot of us deliverance today. What did I say? I said God is going to give every one of us deliverance today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. One of the ways of in many ways, a lot of people partake in idolatry. And a lot of people don't know. Let me say that again so that you hear it. I say many ways a lot of people partake in idolatry without them knowing. They do it unknowingly. They don't, they don't do it intentionally. One way or the other, you know, maybe you are partaking uh, uh, in idolatry without you knowing. You didn't know that is not the right thing. You just find yourself, you did it and you have moved on. And now maybe that is just haunting you and you don't know. So that's what we are going to be looking this morning. I pray that God give us understanding as we go on. And I also pray that through the heart of the, through the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. It does not confuse, but he convicts us of the world of sin. As I will be teaching, in any area that you know you you have heard without you knowing and you have been part of idolatry i pray that god will just reveal to you and you will just see yourself you will know that hey this is me again praise the lord let's go to the book of galatians 5 19 to 21. it's a deliverance meeting and i know deliverance is going to take place in our life galatians 5 19 to 21. so please take your note your ipad and your bible as we go on this morning. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, atrial, and uh, let me stop there because uh, we have a long note. So I want to just stop in that place so that we can move on. I said in the beginning of this series that the work of the flesh is 17 in number. 17 in number and we have treated just five today will be the fifth one that we are treating and through the help of the holy spirit i know we'll be able to go through each and every one of it anything that opposes the spirit or anything that is not not in line with the will of god or the plan of god for our life is work of the flesh your spiritual work with god Anything that also attack your fear, spiritual work and uh, work, work, W-A-R-L-K. Your spiritual work with God is also the work of the flesh. Hallelujah. Let's look at another scripture as we lay foundation for what we are teaching today. Let's go to book of Exodus. Turn with me in your Bible to your book of Exodus or just jot it down. Book of Exodus 20 and verse 3. You shall have no other God before me. That is the commandment. You know, we have the 10 commandments. So one of the 10 commandments says, you shall have no any other God beside me. So that alone gives you an understanding of what idolatry is. So anything that we put in a position of God is idolatry. I go back again. Anything that you put in the position of God is idolatry, means you have turned that thing into idol and you are worshiping it. An idol is anything 
We want more than God. So that's number one. I go again. An idol is anything you want more than God. That's one. An idol also is anything we rely on more than God. Anything you want more than God, anything you rely on, anything you, you know, you rely on, you depend on, is also what? It is God. Some people, they rely on their iron, they rely on their axe, they rely on a lot of things and they see it as God. So anything that, you know, is idolatry, anything we look for or anything you look to for a greater fulfillment than God. Uh -huh. That's another one. I want you to be jotting it down. Anything that you look forward to that is greater for greater fulfillment than God. You feel that this one will bring fulfillment to your life is what is also God. Idolatry is towards the hidden sin drip that drives all other sin. Idolatry is what an hidden sin that drives all other sin. There are many things that people put before God without knowing that has taken position of God without you knowing. A lot of people has put a lot of things before God without you knowing and in your heart you have made it that thing God. Once you do that, it's an idol, and God sees this as idolatry. So let's go. Let's look at a lot of things that we put before God. Number one, your work. When your work gets to a point in your life that you, you, you know, it's more than God, you put it in the position of God, that to the point that you don't have time for things of God again, it's work, 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 work. A lot of people work as taking the place of God in their life. Monday to Sunday, they are working. Monday to Sunday, they don't have time to, uh, to, for God. Monday to Sunday, they don't have time. They don't even spend two hours before God in the whole week. So you may take your work, your, uh, your work to be what? In position of God, and that becomes an idol that you worship. And some people say, my work, ah, my work, my work, my work. Forgotten that if you lose that job, or if you, yes, if you lose that job, another will do it. So we hold anything that you hold in esteem above God, it's called what? It's called idol, praise the Lord. And when you are worshiping it, the way you worship it, some people worship their children, some people worship their husband, some people worship their wife. Whatever the, if their wife say today, don't serve God, they won't serve God. If your husband say today, don't serve, or, uh, your, don't serve God, they are not serving God again. Some people are just like that. Some worship their children. They are so much, you know, they so much idolize their children that uh, they don't have time for God. Whatever the children says is final. Some it may be your boss. You have seen your boss in the position of God. When he says to you, uh, you, can't, you can't do this, you just see it as, as that. And you worship them. So whatever you are worshiping is what is idol. Anything you are worship, uh, you are worshiping is idol. Praise the Lord. Some worship wealth. They worship money. A lot of people worship money. They see money as God. They take it in high esteem. We, you see the way they deal with their money, they can't give anybody. They can't help anybody. They just hold it to themselves. They, in fact, to even spend it for themselves is also a problem. They idolize money so much. You see, there are some people, they prefer to be working and working and just be gathering the money and just put it in a place. They don't want to spend it. They are happy when they look at the account and the money is swelling. That gives them joy. They look at the account and say, well, I have this thousand, I have this mil a million, but they can't spend it. They can't help any other person. Means you are, what? You are worshiping that money. Again, some people, is their car. Some people idolize their car. Aha. Uh -huh. For example, they will say to their, they will say to anybody, you cannot eat in this car. They say it. You have seen people like that. Say to their children, they can't eat. When they even buy them like McDonald's, the children can't eat it. They have to get to their destination before they will be able to eat it. The way they idolize their car, I've seen a man that puts his car very close to this window, that when he's sleeping at night, he has to get up and go and look at the car, if the car is still there. So a lot of people worship a lot of things. Praise God. Some worship animal. You bow to animal, you do some things. Some even when you want to swear, this a lot of people don't know. And this God is going to give us deliverance. When you want to swear, you swear by things, you swear by iron, you swear by a lot of things, you swear by a different thing. 
in order to have covenant with other people. So when you do that, you have entered into idolatry without you knowing. And you may be a child of God and you find out that there are a lot of things that you know hinders you. That's why we need deliverance this morning. So please follow me to the end of this sermon. And I know that God will help us. Praise the Lord. Some people is the appearance, is their dressing. They take time too much. They can spend three hours in painting, in doing what they need to do. And, you know, before they go and have their bath, they have idolized themselves to the point that it's like worshiping themselves. They can take three hours when they want to have their bath. They have number one layer, they have number two layer, they have number three layer that they have to keep, well, you know, they just keep piling it in their body before it's, it's, it's more than, you know, beauty now. It's gone extra mad. They idolize their body. They cannot give their tithe. They can't give their offering. But that money, they can use it to buy whatsoever. I'm not saying it's not good for you to buy things for your, uh, for your body and, and, and look uh, take good care of your body. But you have done it into extreme. You have done it into extreme. Some people, if they don't put certain things in their body, they can be crying and say, oh, Lord, I haven't done this. I haven't done that. Some people, there are things that they precept by precept that they have to go through in the morning before they will take their bath. Once they have, when they wake up, there are things they will put on. There are things that they will do. There are that they will do. They don't have time to go in the presence of God and spend quality time with God. So anything that you do in a stream, it goes to idolatry. Praise the Lord. And this we need to know. It may be your hair. You know, a lot of people idolize their hair every week or every other day. You find them doing hair. You find them spending money. There's no money they can't spend for, your, for their hair. Yes, it is good. I am not against it. So get me very well before you begin to say, pastor don't want us to dress. No, that is not it. But the Bible makes us to understand that we must do everything in moderation. So anything that you have done excessively has, done, has got what? Has gotten to the point of idolatry. Anything you do, anything at all that we do, excessive, excessively, that we are put in the position of God, either we bow down to it, either we give our heart, the whole of our hearts to it, that is idolatry. So I want that point to be established. Anything you do, anything I do, excessively, that I give my whole heart to, and he has taken the place of God in my life, that is what? That is idolatry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to point number two. I'm going to be breaking it down. Amen. Again, let's look at the book of Matthew 12 and verse 39. Some people, when you, you go about and you are looking for sign, and I will tell you as we read the book of Matthew 12, 39. Let's go to the book of Matthew 12 and 39. Listen to this sermon because I know it's going to help you. At times, you say, you know, I said, there are things that we do without us knowing, without us knowing, and it's idolatry. Praise the Lord. You may not know, but today I pray that God will give us all deliverance. Matthew 12, 39. But he answered them, an evil and adulterous generation, seeking for a sign, but no sign, will be given to it, except the sign of the prophet of Jonah. Praise the Lord. This is, um, this is Jesus. He is speaking. The devil has, uh, the devil has unfortunately succeeded in convincing many of the people that this uh, that they needed you know they needed a sign and when i'm talking about sign the sign i'm talking about is when you go and beat uh, and check your your star you know there are some people uh they want to see the sign of their star they look at the sign of their star they tell you i am this i am that and every time when you wake up in the morning they are very interested in looking for sign. Uh, they want to know what their star is saying. Are you part of those people? They want to see what the star is saying. So they look at it. One, one, they practice what? Horoscope. You know, they look at their horoscope. They want to look at the, the star. They are reading what their horoscope. And they will say, I'm Aries, I'm whatever. You know what I'm talking about. And you read whatever it says. Meaning you are putting interest in another God. You are not waiting for God to direct you. And a lot of times, a lot of people do it. When I was growing, I have done it before. And I have to be honest. 
that I have to go and look at my what my style is saying because I don't know. Those years when I was much, much, much younger, you know, you just follow the crowd. You just follow people doing what they are doing without you knowing the implications of it. So you also want to do, you want to check it. So I go and look at my style. I want to look at Aries every time. I want to read what is there and I want to find out. Uh -huh. I want you to know that anytime you are doing that, it's idolatry. And what you are doing is also a form of divination. What did I say? It's a form of divination, meaning you are trying to find information, you know, from something that is not of God. So we look at uh, signs of Zodiac. So we look as much as possible to look at what is happening tomorrow, what is going to happen today. And that was exactly what happened to the Pharisees in their time. That is in the book of Matthew 12 and 39. They were asking God for sign. The sign that is there is like the horoscope. Hallelujah. And when we're looking at horoscope, where it means a divine information, divine information about an individual. So you want to know what is happening. You want to check. Some people will check their husband one. They will check their wife one. They will say, ah, no wonder he's behaving like that. It because it's this, because it's that, because it's this. And some people go extra mile. Hear this. Some people go into tartrot card. Some people go into palm breeding. Some people, you may be in one way or the other, they bred your palm. You just give your palm to people and they will hold it. Some people will be saying to you, this is what you are meant to be. This is what you are meant to be. This is what is going to happen to you. Anytime that you do that as a child of God, or maybe you have done it in the past, what is it? That is idolatry. And this is why I said that a lot of things that we do, we don't know. We just do it because, you know, a lot of people want to know about their future, but you are finding out about your future from the wrong from the wrong um, from the wrong source you are not totally depending on god it's only god that owns our future what did i say it's only god that owns our future anytime you seek for an alternative that is idolatry i want to say it again anytime we seek for idolatry anytime you go and look and say, let me check my star and let me see what is happening. I want you to check my, my future. I want you to tell me other than God, if you are not depending on God, anytime you do that, that is what? That is idolatry. Anytime you are looking for a quick fix in life, for challenges of life, for trials of life, some people will say, this trial is too much. This trouble is too much. Do you know where you can take me to other than God? You say, do you know where you can take me to? There are some people will make suggestions to you as well. I know one brother that is there. I know one man. I know one woman. People travel extra mile for, for this kind of thing. What did I say? They travel uh, extra mile. I know somebody that lost almost 16,000 pounds looking for what is not missing. What did I say? Looking for what is not missing. Have to move from where she is, has to buy ticket, going to search, going to look. If that is you, today you need to repent. What did I say? Today you need to repent. We're talking about deliverance. Say anytime you are looking for anything quickly to fix any challenge or any trial in your life, visiting a ballast, visiting places that you are not meant to visit. And somebody is telling you about your future. Somebody is saying to you, okay, this is what the future, this is what uh, lies for you in the future. This is what the future holds for you. This is what they see and they use your hand. Some people, you go to some places, they will use the sand and they'll use it to check your life, to check some things. Sometimes they will ask you to speak in money or speak in cowries or speak in leaves or speak in whatever. And once you speak over it, then they will tell you, this is what is happening in your past. This is what is happening in your future. Anytime you resort to that, it's what? Idolatry. I repeat again, idolatry. It means you are putting your interest in any other thing other than God. You see where we are starting and the way I'm taking it so that we have understanding. It means what? It means you are putting your interest in any other God other than God. You know what the Lord said to me this morning? And this is why I get so interested about this topic called idolatry. The Lord said to me, he said, there are many times, so I want you to lend me your ears. 
what I'm going to say because we are going to be praying about it. The Lord said to me that there are a lot of people in the journey of life that they have visited places like that. And this is the kind of dream that you have. It is today that God gave me this understanding because I don't know it before. The Lord said some people will now have a dream. In your dream, you feel that somebody is standing on your way and it's not allowing you to go. you find out that any time that you want to make a move, you are in a journey, you cannot reach where you are going. I want you to play back those dreams and begin to see that the, 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 actual, the actual problem has to do with idolatry. What did I say? The actual problem, I'm going to repeat again, has to do with idolatry and witchcraft. But we are not talking about witchcraft today. Let's stay on this so that you get a deeper understanding. I'm going to want, uh, repeat again what the Lord said to me. Anytime, anytime that you have a dream and you see in your dream, maybe a uh, masquerade is ch chasing you, maybe in your dream, you just find out that you are on an ending journey. You keep going and you keep going and you keep going and you never reach your summit. You never get to where you are meant to get to in life. You keep going through circle. One of the things that is hindering you, there are places that you have visited in the past and no, unknowingly to you, when you visit those places, you enter a covenant relationship without you knowing. Because why they are using your palm, or maybe why they are using whatever, maybe you speak in whatever, and they use it. You have entered into their court covenant relationship. I say it again because I want this to be clear, and I want you to get delivered. You see, anytime you visit any place, and maybe you speak to money, maybe you speak to cowries, maybe some they have the you know they just. Have and pluck a leaf and give it to you and ask you to speak to it and you agree. You have entered into a covenant relationship with them unknowingly. Again, you have moved on, but the covenant is not broken. Is this morning the Holy Spirit begin to help me by teaching me? You have moved on. The covenant is what is not broken. The covenant is intact. What did I say? The covenant is intact because why you are busy speaking to those things? What they are doing, they use your horoscope, they use your star in order to check and to, for them to know. And this is the way it's, uh, it will praise. These powers are connected to the sun. These powers are connected to the moon. Did you see it? These powers, they use stars, they use moon, and they use sun in order to check what is going to happen in your life or what is happening in your life. And once they check it, they also reveal it to you. And this is not the power of God. What did I say? It's not the power of God. Hear this. Your name is there. You have moved on, but you have entered an agreement with them. As they are speaking, you agree with them. Maybe you are able to do one or three things in, at that spot. I want you to just play back play back what I'm, I'm talking about. I want you to cast your mind back. I want you to just cast your mind back at some past in your life where you have visited. Yes, you have moved on. You have given your life to Christ, but you did not break those covenant relationships or places that you have visited. And the covenant that you have taken in those places that you have visited is still standing. Some of you, when you went to those places, you didn't just speak. Some of you, they asked you to bring certain things. And you were able to take those things back to them and they use it for you. And you know, you agree with them that they should do whatever they want to do. Some they even take your cloth, some they take your hair, some they take some things from you, and you are there in the present, and you are able to you are, you know, you are able to agree with them. A lot of this happen, happen especially among African descent because of our background. Am I talking to somebody? And when we are going through trials of life, some people don't want to wait. Some people don't want to wait on God. Some people are just looking, they are looking for the quick fix. They are looking for how the problem will be chased out of their life. Hear me and hear me very well. If you have visited any of those places, it may be the result why you are not making the kind of progress that you are meant to make in life. Because why you were speaking into those calories, into those money, into you know whatever they have given to you, why you did those things, you enter into a covenant with them, meaning you did not put your trust in God. You put your trust in the God 
or in the power that they want to use in order to set you free. So it's not the power of God that set you free at that time. And hear me, and hear me very well. You, we all know that the devil has nothing he can give to you. What did I say? The devil has nothing he can give to you. When there is a problem in your life and you visit any of these places, I want you to know this. It's only suspended. What did I say? It is suspended. It's only the power of the most high God that can give you complete victory. What did I say? It's the power of the most high God that can give you complete victory. A lot of people, this affect their marriage, this affect their, uh, their finances, this affect their ways of life because they have caught a covenant relationship with another God. Now they are believer, but they have not broken that covenant. They are moving on. As they are moving on, it's like there is a soul tie. Again, it's a soul tie because your soul is tied with those altars. What am I saying? Hear me this morning because somebody is about to be delivered this morning. Somebody is about to be set free this morning. Somebody is about to go to another level. Somebody is about to have a, life, a, a, a change of life this morning. Somebody is about to experience victory on every side. Somebody shout hallelujah. What am I teaching this morning? The moment you, you leave the place, you have already... What did I say? I have already entered a covenant relationship with them. Take this. Your name is on their altar. What did I say? Your name is, there, is on their altar. They perform sacrifices. At times, it may be one sacrifice, it may be more sacrifice on your behalf. And when they perform those sacrifices, it's on the altar. They mention your name. You agree with it. What they gave to you, you also use it. Am I talking this morning? What they said, you are a partaker of whatever they did at that altar. At that altar. You joined them. You were united with them as one flesh in whatever they were doing. You agree with them. Your spirit agree with them. Your soul agree with them. And now you have given your life to Christ. It may even be when you have given your life to Christ, you have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. And in the process, you are believing maybe for something and the thing is not coming, you know, as expected. It's not coming so fast as you want it. It's not coming hurry, hurry. Aha. It's not coming quick, quick as you expected. And you begin to say, I don't even know. I need help. And somebody decides to lead you there. I want you to cast your mind back to places that you have visited. They may call it a church, but you know the kind of sacrifice that you had there. They may call it whatever. Give it a man of God, a woman of God, but you know that they are not worshiping Jehovah God. What am I talking about? They are not worshiping Jehovah God. The Bible makes us to understand. It said, by their fruit, you shall know them. By their fruit. The fruit, what you saw there, you knew that mm -mm, this is extra. This is not God. These people are worshiping. This has nothing to do with God. And you were part of them. You sat in their midst. You congregated with them. You ate with them. And your soul was tied there. You say, Pastor, is this, is this true? Yes, it's true. It's scriptural. Those places that you have visited. Some people in life, they have given their life to Christ, but they never break that covenant. So as they go in the journey of life, that covenant is still waiting. This morning, what did I say? This morning, the Holy Spirit began to say to me, he said, there are a lot of people, and this is the example of this kind of people. He said, they that have visited such places, they see that in their journey of life, they keep having the same dream. They keep having the same dream, walking and not getting to where you are going. Walking and finding out that maybe you just find out that uh, uh, you just find uh, some people just rush to the road and they're about to stop you and you're afraid you run back. Maybe it's a masquerade. Maybe you are just going in circle. I want you to check your life this morning. I want you to cast your mind back to places that you have been that you didn't take seriously. I want you to cast your mind back. I want you to cast your mind back this morning so that the Lord will give you victory. Shout hallelujah. Matthew 6, 20 and 21. Quickly. He said, but lay up your tre lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither month or rust destroy, and where teeth do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. I want you to match, mark that word. Where your treasure is. Some of you, 
Your heart is where you have, you have uh, put some sacrifice. Your heart is there. You, every time you remember, you begin to say, ah, maybe it's because of what I did 20, 19, 18. Maybe it's what I did in 1950. You know, the Holy Spirit bring it to you, but you suppress it. You know that every time it comes up, it, it kept coming up in your eye. You see it again and again and again and again and again and again. Idolatry is one of the truths that the devil used to turn people away from God. What did I say? Idolatry is one of the truths that devil used to turn people away from God. They turn people away from God. Some people will say it's the same God. No, it's not the same God. The iron God is not the same God that you and I serve. It's not the Jehovah God. No, you cannot worship what is created by the creator and call that God. Did you get what I've just said? And I go back again. You can't worship anything that is created by the creator and call it God. It's impossible. You can't call it God. You can't bow down to an iron. You can't bow down to a goat. You can't bow down to an image and you say that is God. No, the God that we serve, I want you to know this. He have ears and he can hear. He have eyes and he can see. He have mouth and he can speak. The Bible gives us an understanding that he can move on behalf of his people. The Bible also gives us an understanding that the God that you and I serve, I believe is the same God. He said, his eyes see to and pro. So it's not like an image that does not see. It's not like an image that does not hear. These powers, the way they, they invoke this power is either through the goddess or they invoke it through the moon, through the sun, through the star. So you must have an understanding to differentiate between the true God and the God that you bow to in order for you to have victory. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, consulting uh, Abalis, consulting Abalis or any priest that is not the priest of God. Anything you worship other than God is what is idolatry. Anything you worship other than God is what idolatry, idolatry. They put something down and use, they ask you to use your mouth to carry it. You use your mouth to carry it and you eat it. That is idolatry. They put some things together and they ask you to eat it. You eat it. And from that day, the moment you eat it, you thought things are sorted out. But hear me, devil does not give you anything. Devil does not have anything to give you. What does he have to give you? He doesn't have anything to give you. He only give you things that will destroy you. Shout hallelujah. So today, I have come as a servant of the living God. Every item of the devil in your hand, every item of the devil in your home, as the Lord will begin to open your eyes, every item of the enemy that you are still holding on to as individual. Today, as you take, as we take authority together, the Lord is going to give you victory over it in the name of Jesus. What did I say? The Lord God Almighty is going to give you victory over it in the name of Jesus. That's what they gave to you. And every morning, they will ask you to do what? Talk to the soul. Uh, somebody sent the clip to me. I, I, I was just, it, 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 you know, somebody was saying to them, which is their pretenses, and he was saying to them, he said, this money, yeah, for you to have money, take the highest the minimum, the minimum, the nonsense. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to exalt it. And he was saying it. And he asked them to do this and do that and do that. And people were calling in and people were, you know, people were, you know, you know, anything that is of God, you have little people joining Anything that is of the devil, oh my God, you will have a lot of crowd. They will, you know, they want to know more. When it's of, when anything that is God, and hey, people will say, hey, hey, those pastors, hey, those pastors. But when it's of the devil, nobody condemn it. Nobody there condemn it. Everybody wants to be a part of it. Everybody say, okay, I will gain something. Just let me gain something. Idolatry. Idolatry. Praise the Lord. Idolatry. You see, a lot of people believe that Idolatry ended in Old Testament. Idolatry did not end in Old Testament. Hallelujah. You see, anytime you divert your attention from God, what did I say? Anytime I divert my attention to God, from God, to things, to things, what is he saying? I'm, I'm doing what? I'm practicing idolatry. I want you to understand that every earthly things will pass away. So don't put anything in your life above God. What did I say? Every earthly things will pass away. Your car, your husband, your household, whatever you have, there will be a time they will pass away. 
Never put your trust, never get to a point that you are worshiping those things. Everything that we have here, I want you to know that it's temporary. It is temporary. It will soon pass away. And that's why the Bible makes us to, well, to understand everything here will do what will pass away. We are here temporarily. We are not here permanently. What did I say? We are here, temp uh, we are here temporary. We are temporarily. We are not here permanently. So get to the place that you are not deceived. What did I say? Get to the place that you are not deceived. You see, since we have been dealing with this topic, God has granted me grace. You see, at times you look at some subject and say, I'm above it. I'm not above it. God just called me back. It's like I'm able to see some things. And I thank God that it's in this season that I'm able to look at all these things. And I begin to do what? I began to do an MOT on my life. I begin to do a check on my life to see where I have gone wrong, to see what I put in place of God in my life. And this is what I want you to do as well this morning. Many of us automatically we believe that once you you, you uh, once you have a golden image, that is it. At times, it's not a golden image. It can be something that you have put above God in your life. So it's not about any car or any image that you bow to or anything that you. What is it that has taken the place of God in your life? It's a question you need to ask yourself. It's a question I need to ask myself. What is it that has taken the place of God? in your life. What is it that has taken the place of God in my life? I pray that the Lord open our eyes and give us great understanding this morning in Jesus' name. We're going to be praying a deliverance prayer, but I want you to get this before we go on. Turn with me again to the book of 1 John 5 and 10. I wanted to do this in two series, but I'm trying as much as possible to push so that we finish this today. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in him. Do you have that? Did you hear that? Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has bore concerning his son. So anytime you put your belief in, in anything, uh -huh, that's what the scripture says. You may be saying, no, I don't agree. First John 5, 10, take time and read, that, read it again. Anytime you don't believe, anytime you, you know, you draw attention away from God, it means you have, you have made God to be a liar. And making God to be a liar is another form of blasphemy. What did I say? It's a form of blasphemy. When you make God to be a liar, when you think that, oh, God cannot help me. I have to look for help. You see, some people will say that. God can't help me. Heaven will help those who help themselves. I have to look for help. I can't sit down like this. I have to look for who to help me. I'm not saying who to help me, me help you financially. Some people will say, I need who to help me. I need people who will take me out. I need people that will show me the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So you need to hold on to God. What did I say? Hold on to God. You may have bigger challenges. You may experience the trouble of life, but I'm here to tell you, it's only God that has the power to see you through in every way, in everything that you are going through. Which one do you want? Do you want your problem to be suspended and come back in multiple ways? Or do you want your problem once, uh, once and for all? Ah, it's taking off. People that want their problem to be suspended, they will enjoy, uh -huh. they will enjoy it temporarily. Some things will happen. They say, yes, thank you. Now, nah, thank you. Ah, that man is so powerful. That woman is so powerful. And uh, they give glory to who? They give glory to man. People that, you know, they have been on the queue and they are thinking, God, when is it going to be? It's taking long, truly. But at the end of the day, the glory God is going to take because he has a way of sorting you out. Somebody shout hallelujah. God has a way of start sorting you out. Don't seek after another God. What did I say? Don't seek after another God. Hallelujah. Make sure, make sure God is your rock. Make sure God is your shield. Make sure God is your strong tower. Make sure God is all that you have. Praise the Lord. Any other thing that you are about to, any other thing that you know within yourself, thank God you are in the comfort of your home or you're in the office or wherever. You have to make that confession today so that those dreams that you have been having, so that those things that that you have been seeing and things are not working for you so that you can break the covenant that you have taken. I understand.
understand the power of covenant. What did I say? I have the great understanding of covenant because if a covenant is not breaking, another covenant cannot come to place. Am I talking to somebody? Some of you have entered a covenant relationship with God, like I said earlier on, but you are not enjoying victory that you need to enjoy. You are not enjoying the blessing that you need to enjoy because of another covenant that, has, that is speaking on your behalf. Praise the Lord. And if we have to look at the life of Moses, Moses has similar issues. You know, he lives in the house of Pharaoh. And there is a lot of idol worshiping that, you know, that went on in the, in the life of, uh, in the house of Pharaoh. When Moses died, the Bible makes us to understand that even the enemy was asking for the, for the, for the body huh, of Moses. Why? Because there are some covenant relationships where he was growing up without him knowing that he has entered into. It's my prayer that every one of us will enter into God's full covenant today in the name of Jesus as we break away from any covenant that is not of God. Shout hallelujah. Let's look at this scripture. I love to teach so that people have understanding. I'm not just calling a prayer point and it does not make sense. Let's look at the book of Ezekiel 14 and verse 3. I want us to finish this today. Ezekiel 14 and verse 3 says, Son of man, these men have taken their idol into their heart. Did you see that? These men have taken their idol into their heart and set the stumbling block of their iniquity before their faces. Should I indeed let myself be consulted by them? So when again, your heart, the things that you put in your heart as priority can become what? An idol, an idol. The elders of Israel, the Bible says, they set up idols in their heart. So it's not that they are bowing to anything. It's not that they have visited places but idol in their heart. If I may ask you this, if, um, this morning, what is the idol that you are set in your heart? What is that thing that you have given priority to? Is it gold? Is it silver? What is it? Is it human that you have placed in the, in the heart, um, in the place of God that you are carrying and you are carrying them so much that you, you see them as God? This is what the scripture is saying to us in the book of Ezekiel 14 and verse, and verse 3. What is that thing that you have carried so much in your heart? You have given power to and every time you bow to it every time you have it, it has taken the place of god in your life when we when you have time i want you also to go and read verse four of that or read the whole of it and the lord is saying to them to the house of israel that idol that you put in your heart has become a stumbling block a stumbling block and it's the same way i'm saying to you as we get ready right now to pray that idol in your heart has become a stumbling block that stumbling block is what you see in your dream that you are not able to cross over you are not able to make it that every time you want to cross over there is a masquerade that comes every time you want to cross over there is things that happen you just see people challenging you and you run back and you are not able to cross over today by the power of the blood of Jesus, as you are hearing the sound of my voice, the Lord is going to give you victory. Those things you have in your heart, those things you have in your purse, those things you carry everywhere, those things they ask you to put at the entrance of your home, even at the door. You say, Pastor, you are not talking about Africa. You are talking about America. Uh, you are talking about Britain. Yes, people have it in their home that when you enter, they have it already. They know you know where you hide it. Today, the Lord wants to give you victory. What did I say? Today, today, the Lord God Almighty wants to give you victory. God wants to walk back into those things that are stumbling block in your life and give you victory over it. God wants to set you free today in the name of Jesus as you hear the sound of my voice and you make up your mind. And as I'm speaking, you are able to jog your memory and you remember those places that you have visited, those things that you have taught, that you are not meant to talk, those places that you have a covenant with and you have moved on. It may be 10 years, it may be 13 years. A covenant is a covenant. Until it's broken, it remains, it remains a covenant. Hear this before I round up. A covenant is not like an agreement. What did I say? A covenant is not like an agreement. An agreement, you can make up your mind. I don't want it again. You just tear it. And you put it in the bin. Yes, an agreement. It's more than an agreement. And this is why marriage also is a covenant. What did I say? 
Marriage is a covenant. When you enter into it, it's a covenant. Uh -huh. It takes the grace of God when you come out of it to break the covenant. Because before God, you are standing. It's the same thing. Uh -huh. When you visit some places, am I giving you a, a, a better understanding? It's the, place, it's, it's the same thing. Places that you have visited and you say to them, I'm coming back. Or they were able to do some things for you and you use it. I'm not condemning you. We are getting to the place of deliverance this morning. What did I say? We are getting to the place of deliverance this morning. As many of you that have joined faith with me, as many of you that see what I'm saying as right, as many of you as I'm speaking, and you are able to cast back your mind, and you are able to remember one or two or three things that has happened in the past. Yes, today, God wants to give you victory. And watch this. If you are able to join me, in truth and in spirit, as I'm speaking, even right now, you will find out that everything about your life will change. What did I say? Everything about your life will change. Those things that has held you in captivity, the chain will be broken because it's spiritual. It is not physical. And anything that is spiritual, you may not be able to see it with an open eye, but you see the manifestation. The manifestation is what you are seeing in your life now, that things are not moving, that your life is slow down, that you feel, you feel that something is holding you down and you don't know the thing. You don't know what is holding you back. Today is the day of victory. What did I say? Today is the day of victory. What did I say? Today is the day of victory. Today, we'll be, we'll be making a decree, decree and declaration in order to break those covenants. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I've revealed the word of God to you, and uh, I believe that you are ready for your deliverance right now. I believe. Uh -huh. What did I say? I believe that you are ready for your deliverance right now. So our prayer point is going to be in three in three series. And the first one is for us to make an open confession. So wherever you are that you are hearing me, if you are in office and you feel that you will not be able to make those confessions as you are hearing me, you may take time and go somewhere. It may be toilet and you'll be able to speak. And as you are speaking there, the Lord will give you victory. Every one of you that you know, ah, what am I saying? I say you know what I'm talking about. God cannot lie. What am I talking about? I say God cannot lie. I'm saying it again. God cannot lie. There are many of you that are experiencing this kind of dream that I've just spoken about right now. And it's as a result of you visiting some places in the past and the covenant relationship you have there. You thought it's over. You thought, ah, anyway, I'm not going there again. What is the big deal? The big deal is they put your life in your home. The speed that you meant to be making as a child of God, you are not going in that speed. They have stopped you in the realm of the spirit. But today, I say you are coming out. I say today, I say you are coming out. I say today, I want you to begin to declare it. Right? That's the first time. I want you to lift up your West, wherever you are, say today by faith, I'm coming out. Say today by faith, I'm coming out. Say today by faith. Maybe it's your mom that took you to those places. Maybe it's your father. Maybe it's your uncle. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your wife that helped you and took you to those places. You have visited those places. But right now, things that happened there is affecting your life. Aha, I want you to begin to declare by faith, say you are coming out. Maybe it's your children that you have taken there. Maybe it's your what? I want you to begin to say, God, today I am coming out. Say, I am coming out. Begin to say it until it registered in your heart. I want you to begin to say it. I want you to begin to say it. Say, I am coming out. By grace today, I am coming out. By the mercy of God, I am coming out. The way I'm saying it, I want you to begin to say it. Say, I am coming out. Some of you even have incision to do for those places that you have visited. I want you to say it again. Say, I am coming out. Touch those things that you know. And say, today I am coming out. I'm coming out of this oath. I'm coming out of this covenant. I'm coming out of this evil agreement. I'm coming out today by the blood. I am coming out by the mercy of God. Any places that I've visited, oh Lord, that has become a stumbling block in my way, that has become a stumbling block to my life. Say, today, by grace.
grace and the mercy of the Most High God. Say, I am coming out. 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 I want you to go ahead and begin to say it. I want you to go ahead. I'm running because of time. Time is not permitting me, so I'm running as much as possible. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to say it. We still have two minutes to say that. Say, I am coming out. Let it register in your heart today that you are coming out of that mess. You are coming out of that covenant. You are coming out of that oath. You are coming out of that agreement. You are coming out from that altar. I want you to say it again. Say, I'm coming out from those altars. Altars that I'm visited. Say, today by the mercy and the grace of God. Say, I am coming out. My children are coming out. My husband is coming out. I want you to begin to say it again. Say it, say it again until it registered in your conscious mind. As you are saying it, begin to look at the picture in your heart and see yourself coming out by the grace and the mercy of God today. By the grace and the mercy of God today, the anointing of God is going to reach out to you wherever you are and you are hearing my voice. Anointing of God is going to bring deliverance into your home, into your life, into her, into everything that is yours. Deliverance is going to take place. Go ahead and begin to say it. Go ahead and begin to say it. Go ahead and begin to say it. I join my faith with you today. Wherever you are hearing me, I stand under the cross of Calvary. I stand under the blood of Jesus. I speak into your life by the power and the name of Jesus. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of deliverance. As many that is hearing the sound of my voice, brother, and as many of you that wants to be out, because some people don't want to be out, they just look at it and say it's normal. It is not normal. As many that wants to be out, as we go in the Nukota Librado, Shakata Librada Rosha, as we go in that confession today, the yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, upon on Zion, there shall be deliverance, and the people of God will possess their possession. I speak into your life by the grace and the mercy of God. There will be deliverance today. I said there will be deliverance today. So there is an act of faith. You act to believe the word of God that I'm saying, so that will be deliverance in your life, wherever you are hearing me from. I said there will be deliverance today upon Mount Zion. In the name of Jesus, our grace of God will be released over you. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I want you to say this word after me. That is the second level. Open your heart because now you have prepared your heart in order to receive your deliverance. I want you to open your heart. Go back to this step. Go back to this prayer. After this session, Aha, and I want your heart to be there. That dream will stop from today. That dream will not reoccur. As many that believe, as many that release their faith, there will be deliverance upon Mosiah in the name of Jesus. Say this, say this, say this, say spirit of the Lord and say spirit of the most high God. I come before you today by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. I've come to ask for mercy. Be saying it as I'm saying it. Say I've come to have for mercy in the time of need. I want you to walk back into my past for you to forgive any sin of idolatry holding me back by the power of the blood of Jesus, any sin of idolatry that I've taken part from or, or taken part of in the past. Oh Lord, stopping my blessing, stopping me from moving forward. Say I have by the precious blood of the blood of Jesus to forgive me today in the name of Jesus, I break. I want you to say it again. I break any evil covenant that I have entered into as a result of the places I have, I, 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 I have visited. Say, I break any evil covenant in the name of Jesus or from the place I have visited. If you know the place as I'm talking, mention the place, mention the place and begin to say that covenant today is broken. Say that covenant, just go ahead and begin to say it. Say that covenant, any covenant I've entered to, I have entered into in that place that I've visited. Or that you take your child, either you take your husband, either you take your, whoever you have taken there. Say today, the covenant I entered into, I didn't know it was idolatry. And if you know, I want you to confess. Say, Father, today, maybe I'm looking for a quick fix. Maybe I wanted a quick, a, a, a quick answer. Say, Father, today, I break that covenant. I break that covenant. I want you to begin to say it. Say, I break that covenant. Say, I break that covenant. Say, I break, I break, I break, I break that covenant.
Colombian that I've entered into, knowingly or knowingly, say today, by the grace and the mercy of God, say I break that covenant, say I break that covenant, say I break that covenant, say I break that covenant. I want you to say it again. I want you to say it again. Whatever I'm preaching, whatever I declare, in any way that I've made my body one flesh with that covenant, say today, I've broken that covenant. That covenant is broken. That covenant is broken. That covenant is broken. Any covenant, I want you to begin to say, say by the power and the mercy of God, I come in the name of Jesus under the precious blood of the Lamb today, and I'm declaring that evil covenant, that satanic covenant that I entered into by seeking another God, by going for help where there is no help. Say today, Father, by your mercy, I break that covenant by the blood of Jesus. Say it again and again. Say it again and again. Use your word to bruise the head of the enemy. Use your word to bruise the head of the devil. Use your word as you are speaking. Say in the name of Jesus and by the blood, I break any covenant that is holding me back, that is not allowing me to enjoy the blessing of God, that is not allowing me to enjoy the covenant relationship with God. Say any covenant that I've entered into. <clears throat> Oh Lord, I want you to begin to say it. Any covenant that I've entered into in the past or the present that is holding me back, I come before your throne. I ask for forgiveness. I come before your throne. I break away from those covenants. Any altar, I want you to say it. Evil altar, demonic altar, ungodly altar that have visited. Oh Lord, that I have my picture, I have anything, and I enter an agreement with them. Say today, by the blood of Jesus, I break that covenant. I break that covenant. I break that covenant. I break that covenant. Say, Father, walk into my past. Say, Father, walk into my past. Father, walk into my past. Father, walk into my past. Any covenant relationship. I want you to begin to talk to your father. Say any covenant relationship that I have entered into. Say today. Say today. The covenant is broken. I want you to begin to speak that way. Say that covenant is broken. That covenant is broken. Any covenant that I've entered into, say today by the blood and the name of Jesus, say it's broken. I want you to say it again. Say that covenant today is broken. Today is the day of my deliverance. Today is the day of my deliverance. Bruise it to bruise the head of the devil. Use it to bruise the head of the devil. Use your word to bruise the head of the Hebrew one. Say today in the name of Jesus, I am I, I am I am set apart. Today in the name of Jesus, that evil ungodly covenant is broken. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever happened on that altar, say from today I take my name away from it. I take my life away from it. In the name of Jesus, whatever I have spoken in the name that is above every other name, I cancel it by blood. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus intercede for me. Let the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus, let that blood speak on my behalf. Let that blood speak on my behalf. I want you to go to another level and begin to declare, today is my day of victory. No devil, no power, no principality can stop me. The blood is going ahead of me and the blood is cutting every covenant relationship, every cause that has been in oppression. I want you to begin to declare, the cause today is broken. Say the cause today is broken. Say the cause that is attached to those evil covenants. Say it's broken. Say it's broken. Say it's broken. Say it's broken. I want you to decree and declare it. Say any cause that is attached to those ungodly covenants. Say it's broken. Say from today, my life is going forward. My life is going forward. Say in the realm of the spirit. I want you to say the way I said it. Say in the realm of the spirit, no power will be able to stop me. No masquerade will be able to stop me. Say, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I overcome from today. I want you to say it. Say, I overcome from today. Say, by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus, say, I overcome. Say, I overcome. Say, I overcome. Every attack in my dream, you know whatever will happen in the physical has to first take place in the spiritual. Say, today, I overcome every attack. I will go forward. Nothing will stop me. Chains are broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. I join my faith with you this morning. All children of the kingdom of God that needs deliverance, whatever, wherever you are visited, any altar you are visited, I come as an authority. As long as you have confessed this day that the covenant is broken, 
I stand in agreement with you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of David, such covenant today that you have entered into unknowingly is broken, is broken, is broken, is broken, is broken, is broken. We arrest every spirit. Mark or ascending that is set loose at the day you enter that covenant. We arrest the spirit in the name of Jesus. I decree from today the covenant is broken. Your life must go forward. Your life must go forward. Your life must go forward. Every power attacking you in your dream, every power coming in form of masquerade, every power coming in form of anything to stop you by the power of the blood of Jesus. From today, you overcome it. I release the blood of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus. Because that old covenant is broken. From now, you will go forward. From now, you will see changes. From now, what you are unable to do from the past, you'll be able to do it with his. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I exalt you. I decree today, you are free. From the whole covenant, I said you are free. Thank you, everlasting Father. Let the blessing of God locate you in every area of, of life. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we adore you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen and amen. I want to say thank you again. The Lord bless you. If God has laid it in your heart to give your offering, to give your tithe or give your seed, please do right now. And as you do, the Lord is going to bless you richly. So your seed, whatever God has laid in your heart, just go ahead and do it. Amen. And I also want to say to you, if you feel that you still want to have a one-to-one -one with me, you can see my email on the screen. Please kindly send me email. And if you have my personal number, I am always here to talk to you. And I know as we talk together, the Lord also will minister to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your time. God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Ha, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Aha, as many of you that have joined me today, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and I also love you. Keep enjoying your victory. In the name of Jesus, you are victorious in every every area of life. Evil covenant concerning you today is broken and it has no power again. Have assurance of this word and believe the word of God. It is well with you. God bless you.